Hey planner friends, it's Ashley. Today we are talking about how to plan in a lined vertical happy planner. What I'm sharing with you will also apply in a regular vertical planner, not just the lined one. The way that my brain works, the lines are just there to help me write straight because I tend to write either uphill or downhill. So the lines are there just to help me write straight. These um, things that I'm gonna talk about can apply to both. It's not just for the line vertical. So um, let's just say how to plan inside of a vertical happy planner. If you're new here, I hope that you will consider subscribing. If this channel is where we talk about planning and creating a life that you love, this thing right here is actually my ring light that I have flipped down over top of my desk and I am going to show you my planner and I'm going to walk you through the steps of planning inside of a vertical happy planner. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing is step number one, as I like to say, I like to think of things in steps. It helps me keep things in order and I know what it is that I'm doing, but the first thing that I like to think about, regardless of what layout I'm working in, whether it's a vertical, if I have a dashboard, um, a horizontal, it doesn't really matter. The first thing that I like to think about is, what am I using this planner for? Basically, kind of what area of my life is gonna go inside of this planner. My vertical planner is my catch-all planner. It's kind of like a home planner, really. Um, this is where schedules go, appointments, anything that we have to get done that day, cleaning schedules, stuff for my son, stuff for my husband, that all goes inside of here. But I will also take things from my fitness planner and put in here like that I need to work out or things from my social media planner that I'm filming that day or editing. Those kind of things will also go inside of here, which is why I call it a catch-all because I put anything and everything inside of this planner. But that is step number one is to think about what you're using this planner for. Now, step number two is to kind of think about how you're gonna use this planner before you start decorating it, before you start planning it. Now listen, these steps, these first few steps are not something that you have to do each and every single week whenever you're planning inside of your planner. It's really just to help you get your own planning system down so you can learn how to use the layout. And then once you get your own planning system down, I mean, you will just fly right through this like it's nothing. Hop in there, get your plan set up and ready to go for the week and it won't take you as long. But step number two is to think about how you're gonna use the planner. And so if we look here, the vertical planner has three sections for each day. So Monday you have this block here, here, and here, and then Tuesday the same thing. And what I like to think about is how am I gonna use this first block? How am I gonna use the second block? And how am I gonna use the third block? Now for me, the first block, I typically put appointments, um, schedules, um, things that are happening that day, this might be my husband's schedules. If we have a doctor's appointment, my son has Cub Scouts. If he has anything for school because he is doing virtual learning, so if they have like a Google Meet or something like that, that is kind of where that first box is. I also will put my priorities of the day inside of that first block so I can see what are the most important tasks that I need to complete today. And really for me, my priorities, the way that I look at them is if I do nothing else today, what are the top like three things that I need to complete today? And that's what I will write down there. Now the second and the third block, for me, these two are a little bit interchangeable. Um, one of them will either be a to-do list for the day, and this is uh, typically just things I'd like to get done that day. It's not a, a general to-do list of things I'd like to get done during the week. It's more of like a day specific to-do list. And then another section might be for decorating or a little bit of memory keeping. I kind of play around with both of those two sections, but typically for me, the top section is for priorities, for schedules, routines, things are happening that day. And then one of these other two sections are going to be a to-do list for the day. All right, step number three is to pre-plan your week. Oh my goodness gracious. If you are not pre-planning, please at least give it a try. If you're someone who's like, I don't need to pre-plan, I don't like pre-planning, at least try it a couple of times or maybe even for a month straight just to see if it's something that would work for you. So when it comes to pre-planning, I actually have some pre-planning sheets. Let me, I'm making a mess. Let me show them to you really quickly. Um, these ones are ones that I printed out. I will have these linked down below in the description box. You can print them out for a mini, a classic, and a big. These ones here are printed for a big happy planner. This one here is for a classic, but I love these pre-planning sheets. They are amazing. Normally I use these for social media, but you can use these for any area of your life. It doesn't matter if you're meal planning, fitness planning and stuff, you can definitely use these sheets. But the reason why I promote pre-planning so much is because whenever you know 
what it is that you're doing each day, it kind of helps guide sticker placement. So let's say on Monday I have an appointment and for me, my style, and this is something that I've learned over time, with my style, I like to use boxes to note appointments or I'll use like flag stickers or something like that to note my appointments for the day. And like here, let me show you an example. This is the current week that we are on and you can see here, um, we had Cub Scout meeting, which I accidentally put that down for the wrong day um, or the wrong week. Cub Scouts don't actually start until this day, but that's okay, it happens. Um, I had a team call. So those are appointments that I need to highlight for the day so I don't miss those things. And I love box stickers. I will use flag stickers sometimes. It just kind of depends on what sticker books I'm using, which I'll talk about sticker books in just a minute. Here I had a box sticker. Um, here I used a flag sticker for a couple of appointments that we had. Um, meal planning and then I, these ones here are my priorities for the day and it doesn't I mean you could use totally boxes all the way across whether it's an appointment or a priority but to me these being highlighted in boxes is what sets them apart from the rest of the spread so if my day gets busy and it gets hectic and I'm not looking at this checklist I can look at the boxes and I know what the most important things are for me to do that day that's where my pre-planning guides my sticker placement. If I don't have any priorities for the day, well then maybe I get to decorate a little bit more with stickers. And I actually have um, this one here this week, I did decorate a little bit more. Um, not so much with like decorative stickers, I decorated a little bit more with functional stickers, which is okay to do. But you can see here, the boxes are my priorities. I have these ones here are just listed out as one, two, three. Um, this this is priorities that was something that we was doing that day priorities are here and you can see i've used this whole top section for priorities and then down here i've alternated the days on my to-do list for the day so like monday i put it down here but tuesday it was up here and that's that's kind of my whole gist with these two bottom rows or two bottom columns um is that i can do is that i can alternate back and forth between those ones now this week here i actually put like build Legos with Levi and get nails done. Um, my husband went hunting. I put happy Thursday. My husband worked a double. I set up diet bet. Um, do you see how I kind of done, not really memory keeping, but a little bit of memory keeping. Sometimes I do that with gratitude. Sometimes my gratitude goes over here on the left section. So you could definitely have a space inside of this planner for gratitude, but Pre-planning for me helps guide my sticker placement. It helps me know if I need to be a little bit more functional or if I can be more decorative for the week. So let me show you a couple of different spreads that I got really decorative with. This was my vertical planner. Um, this is from the Wild Style Collection. It, it doesn't normally come on these discs. These are, I'm actually using these discs from this planner on my current planner. But anyways, let's start with like July. First week of July, as you can see, I didn't plan. And I wanna tell you, if you ever have weeks where you don't plan, you don't lay a single sticker down, you don't write anything down, it's all good. It happens, don't stress about it. Um, if you wanna go back and back plan, you sure can. I don't like to back plan because I like to see that, you know what, I bet I had a busy week this week, and that's okay. Um, you can back plan if you want, but you don't have to. Um, this week here, you can see that I used some floral stickers to decorate with. This was a little bit more functional. I took my priorities and I usually like using just the top row as priorities for the day, but this one you can see, I changed it up. So this day I had my three priorities in this block, but here I put them here. And this one I put them down here. And then I kind of started that process over to where I had my priorities in different blocks. But I like to note those different than how I am planning. This week was a little bit of a different week. Um, I love this spread, it turned out really, really cute, but to me it wasn't a very functional spread. Now this week, I love this one. This one was so stinking cute, one of my favorites. I love hexagons, but I use the hexagons to note my priorities for the day. And do you see how those stand out different than just the checklist do? That's what I love about pre-planning because I can see, do I need to have checklists for that day? Or maybe can I use a big fun floral sticker on the days to decorate a little bit more? As you can see Sunday here, I didn't have a lot going on. I didn't either on Saturday. And so I've got some more florals right around through there. This week here, same thing. But this week, I really love the way I did this one. I did it a little bit backwards. So I have my checklist up top and down here at the bottom, this is where I noted my priorities for the day. And you can see it with the hexagons and the box and flag stickers down here. And then I have pretty gorgeous 
gorgeous florals down here at the bottom. Side note, if you're ever stuck and you're like, I don't know what stickers to use this week, florals are always a great option. So if we move on, let me show you a few more spreads. This week I had what I was studying for and just a to-do list for the day. My priority was studying, so that's why um, this week was a little bit different. The next week I didn't plan, this week I didn't plan. So look, there's two weeks in a row that I didn't even get in this planner. I'm not stressed about it. I used to actually get really stressed about this and I was like, I didn't plan anything. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that and I need to go back and back plan. And I just, it's not me. It's all right, it's all good that I missed a few weeks. And then this week you can see that the flag stickers are kind of priorities for the day. I also had these appointment box stickers. This was um, a priority of the day. So it was this box sticker over here. Now this one, usually what I like doing on the left side in this column over here is I will put either a gratitude list or I will do a general to-do list. Now for me, a general to-do list is things that I can get done at any time during the week day specific lists are different. Like if I have a, a to-do list for Monday, these are things that I wanna accomplish on Monday. But if I have a general to-do list over here on the left side, that can happen Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, Juvember, you know, some things I just never do. But <laughs> that's okay, it happens, right? If we look here into September, there's another week of not planning. So I've showed you guys a whole month at this point of um, spreads that I didn't create and it's all good. This week here we look at it and um, this week, which with COVID and the virus and everything and staying at home, my plans had changed just a little bit. Um, we didn't have as many appointments or errands or day specific tasks as far as that area goes. So it did change up just a little bit. Here you can see I had a team call that I noted. Same thing over here is those stickers are a little bit different than the rest. I could use more decorative stickers here. We've got the florals all around. Same thing with this week. I can tell that these are my priorities for the day. Actually there my son had a dentist appointment. I had a class I was going to over here. Same thing with this one. And then I will show you, oh I love this spread. This one here is actually a vertical layout and I turned it into a lined vertical. And this is what made me decide that I wanted to use a lined vertical for 2021 because I love this so stinking much. It turned out so cute and I just love the functionality of it. But here you can see I did the same thing. We've got priorities at the top. And if you've noticed, it helps guide my sticker placement. So I know that I have um, priorities, but I also know that I have checklists. And see how I use like a checklist sticker for that sometimes I will use little stickers that say important and I have a Google Meet. This is something else too I wanna share with you. The way that you can think about, let me show you a blank week really quickly. The way that you can think about this planner as well is maybe this is for the morning, this is during the day, and this is in the evening. And that can help guide how you're gonna decorate this planner. And again, that's why I promote pre-planning so much. And it's also a way to get everything out of your head onto paper so you're not going to forget something. Because how many times, be honest with yourself here, how many times have you been like, I'll remember that? And then you don't remember it. I've done it too, more times than I care to admit, where I don't write something down and I just tell myself, I'll remember that. I'll remember it and I never remember it. So pre-planning is also a way for you to brain dump and get everything out of your head. So. Back to the steps. Step number one is to decide how you're gonna use this planner. Step number two was to think about what you're gonna use each section for. Step number three is to pre-plan. And then step number four, this is the fun one, you're gonna pick out stickers. I recommend picking out your stickers before you sit down to plan because what I've noticed, at least for me, and this might be different for you and that's totally okay, but what I've noticed for myself is that if I just sit down, I'm like, hmm, what stickers am I gonna use? And then I start pulling sticker books out. I start pulling stickers from all kinds of different sticker books. I get, well, one, I make a massive mess, but two, it takes me a lot longer to plan. I mean, I might sit in here for an hour, hour and a half versus if I just go and I pick out my stickers before I sit down, by stickers, I mean which sticker book I'm gonna use or I might pick out a couple of them. Does that mean that I have to stick to those sticker books? No, I will pull stickers as I need them, but if I pick them out ahead of time, then I sit down to plan my planning process goes a lot faster and I have what stickers I'm going to use. So that is the next step. And then finally, it's just decorating your planner. And something I really wanna push on is that 
if you are planning inside of your planner and you're not really liking the way that things are going, I want you to continue doing it. I want you to keep trying, keep showing up each week, keep adding the stickers because I know when I first started, I did not like them at all. I was like, these are not cute. I'm not liking the way these are going. But what I learned throughout that process was what not to do, which really helped guide the way that I plan. I learned that I didn't like doing certain things, so I didn't do them anymore. And then I would try something else and I would learn if I liked it or didn't like it. And that's how I've created my own planning style is by consistently planning inside of my planner with a few weeks that are missed, you know what I mean? But I wanna give you encouragement and remind you that it does take practice. If you are someone who can just dive in here and use stickers and it just comes naturally to you, that is awesome. I know for me, it wasn't something that, uh, I was very good at in the beginning. Actually, when I look back at my old planners, I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, this we've we've come a long way, Ashley, <laughs> because uh, it was not it was not very cute in the beginning. But you will get the hang of it. Follow those steps. Now, these steps, um, I think I mentioned this earlier. I'm not even for sure at this point. But these are not steps that you have to do every single time. Uh, it is just a way to help you figure out how you're going to use your planner. But the pre-planning, I definitely recommend to do that every single time. At least try it for a few weeks. See if it's something that works for you. And then also picking out your stickers before you sit down to plan, unless you have that time. Now, if you're like, I have a few hours that I can sit down and play, play with my planner, see what works, what I like, what I don't like, dig through a lot of stickers, by all means, go for it because there are times that I like doing that too. And, you know, sometimes I turn on Netflix or I jam out to some tunes. Um, give me a hot cup of coffee, which I always have. If you guys didn't know that, every time I film a video, regardless of what time it is, I film videos at two in the morning and I have a cup of coffee. I don't know why. I just love that whole part of it. Um, but I always have coffee. And sometimes I like to just sit down and spend a couple of hours inside of my planners. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes I've got to got to be quick and I got to get it done. So that is my tips and the steps that I recommend as far as planning in a vertical layout. I do have a video up on how to use and how to decorate the dashboard planner because I've heard from many of you that the dashboard planner is intimidating. So I did make that video. The steps are similar, but the dashboard planner, I went into more detail about different categories. Um, because it is a completely different layout. Coming up next is going to be how to decorate the horizontal planner. And I'm gonna give you guys some of my tips for that and show you how I like decorating the horizontal planner. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Have an incredible day, my friend, and I will see you in the next video.